warmth and laughter and songs of life, the kinder so innocent with lives ahead, soon to be snuffed with a swish of a hand. Oh God, why me? What have I done? Why do they hate me? And what of this life? Can't I stay home and live like the rest? Vroom, vroom, I can't understand. What is this camp and why am I here? The numbers on my arm, what do they mean? A bit of boards and food that drips? I'm alone, I'm alone. My God, I'm alone. My friends disappear in their great reward for they can't sleep, alas, they're free. And I can't think, they've broken me, but I've fooled them, I've hidden some bread. Another day, up at dark, drink the gruel, two miles to the tunnel, climb down the stairs to haul the rocks and threats of the whip. I pray they don't find my bread in the bed. Oh, I must have slipped, but I feel the blood. My doctor at home could fix the cut. I could see his face. He's probably gone. Such a bright minute. Our lead Jew. Let go of my legs. Stop pulling my arms. You're hurting my head, and I can still work. Don't take my shoes. It's cold without clothes. Oh, God. Don't take me there to that concrete house. Wait just a minute. Give me time to think. What were the words I learned in the ketter? And what are those spigots I see above? Oh, yes. It starts with Shama. It starts with Shama. May his great name grow exalted and sanctified. Amen. Where did your journey begin? All of us have taken different paths to arrive this day at Avensay and at this sacred ground. Some of you may be actual survivors of this camp or another camp. Some may be the liberators who allow the survivors to continue their journey. Some may be the offspring, relative, friend, the curious, the political, or those interested in this place of horror and eventually freedom. How each of our journeys brought us to this unbelievably beautiful place is a book unto itself. The poem I read was written by a 19-year-old Jewish U.S. Army corpsman who was assigned to my father's command after May 6, 1945. Ken Colvin had already been in six concentration camps as a liberator before arriving at Abenson. At 19, Ken had seen, heard, and lived the horrors of man's inhumanity to man. This lifelong impression stays with him today. Following is a paraphrased statement from a Unitarian minister whose words I have found to be so true. The grandchildren of those who threw stones at the innocent now pick up the very same stones to build a monument to those who were innocent. My journey to this place began in 1945 in the comfort of a nice Cape Cod house in a small village outside of Chicago, Illinois, USA. My father, Dr. Hugh MacDonald, had returned from World War II as a Lieutenant Colonel Medical Officer and the commanding officer of the 139th Evacuation Hospital, which helped liberate KZ Evansay in May 1945. Like many GIs, Dad brought home memories, pictures, and souvenirs of his stay in Abensi. As a 10-year-old, I remember seeing the many pictures of this camp 
at the time of liberation and a carved wooden bust of my father. This wooden bust, bought with a pack of cigarettes, is still in the family. Dad never talked about K.Z. Evansy other than explaining the pictures which he eventually burned because of his personal feeling of disgust towards humanities, atrocities to humanities. Because of these pictures, many mysteries remained about our father. These mysteries finally came to light because of my own journey of writing a book about this place. The journey has been rewarding not only for the McDonald family, but because of the light it has shown upon a phantom hospital that even Dr. Wolfgang Kautemer had never known about. The Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C., when questioning the database, was blank with the search of the 139th Evacuation Hospital. Tom Brokaw's book, The Greatest Generation, doesn't mention the 139th, but only talks about another hospital was, which was very much overshadowed by my father's unit in the total rehabilitation of K.Z. Abenson. Until my book, the accomplishments of my father's hospital had never been publicly recorded. The research and writing of the book, Inside the Gates, the Nazi concentration camp at Ebensee, Austria, is not a closing on my father's death in 1957, but an opening and an appreciation of his life and his journey. Since my ver first visit with Wolfgang, a new world has opened to me on my Avency-inspired journey. Ken Colvin told me, my life is now part of the Holocaust, and I will be touched every day by the events that happened here in Avency World War II. A German woman in Munich emailed me and asked me to find her father, her biological father, who was a soldier in the 139th Evac Hospital. At 94 years of age, her biological father is presently living in Little Rock, Arkansas, USA. He and his German daughter are now in contact with each other because of my research at Ebensee. Andrew Sternberg, an Ebensee survivor, called me from Cleveland, Ohio, and told me my father may have saved his life. There is the Army nurse in my father's hospital whom I have grown to know, the actual 3rd Cavalry Tank Commander, Robert Persinger, who was the first liberator into the camp, lives only 140 miles from my front door. My fa father's administrative clerk, Fred Kubley, Jr., lives in Ohio and is still active at 90 years young. All of these people became, became known to me after the start of my journey on the book. It is, a, it is an honor to help celebrate the, the anniversary of the liberation of K.Z. Abenson. We relate to the suffering for those who were the concentration camp inmates. We should also remember, though, and honor the liberators who gave much to those who survived those horrible camps. From a Hindu teaching, there are a hundred of paths to the mountain, all leading in the same direction. So it doesn't matter which path you take. The only one wasting time is the one who runs around and around the mountain telling everyone else that their path is wrong. Peace as you continue on your own individual journeys. Gracias.